Hello, I'm Lizelle Sambury. I am a traditionally published author and this video is the first of the Save the Cat deep dive video. So if you don't know what Save the Cat is, it is a writing structure. So it started with Blake Snyder who wrote a book called Save the Cat for screenplay writing um, and it was then adapted by Jessica Brody into a novel called Save the Cat Writes a Novel. So she basically took that structure and adapted it for writing novels. And that is the book that I read and ended up using for structuring my novels kind of going forward from there. And I made a video a little bit back then. I'll I can't truly can't remember which side is right. I think maybe this one. Um, so I made a video called Breaking Down the Fun and Games where I talked about the fun and games being a section of the Save the Cat structure. And I talked about how I structure that in my novels and how I write. Um, so you can check out that video if you wanted to. But people really liked it and wanted me to talk about the other parts of Save the Cat. And so I decided to do this um, writing craft deep dive series. Um, there will be a playlist. It's all in the description, things like that, where I'm going to go into each section of Save the Cat and talk about how I incorporate it into my novels, how I use it. So this is like my personal method of how I do this. This is not necessarily the quote unquote right way. Um, sometimes it's like very much like right on what Jessica Brody said and sometimes I've really adapted it to make it kind of my own in that way. Um, so that's what this video and what this whole video series is going to be about. And so today I'm talking about the opening image. So this is the first the first of the Save the Cat um, structure sections. Um, Jessica Brody in her book describes this as a before snapshot, snapshot of your character. Um, and that is what we're going to be talking about today. So I've put timestamps below if you want to jump around. I think you should probably watch it all the way through the first time. But like if you come back to this video and you just want to go to certain sections, you'll be able to do that. So let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to start with that before snapshot that Jessica mentioned. So for me, my interpretation of that before snapshot is essentially a look at your hero and their world before the inciting incident happens, but also before they've learned the things that they're going to know at the end of the book. Um, so you're creating an image that shows that like, this is the person they are now when you are meeting them in the book. This is the, per this is like how their life is. Um, and you're just giving a quick snapshot of that because of course you're going to get more in depth with all of that in the setup. And so the opening image is just to give a reader a taste of that essentially. And so that's what like, that's how I think about that before snapshot that she's talking about. When I am starting with the opening image, the first thing I'm thinking about is standing out. That's the first kind of thing that comes into my head. I really try and think of openings that are going to be distinct because the goal of the opening to me is that you want whoever is reading to be drawn into the story. You want them to be curious about what's going to happen next and you want them to keep reading and keep turning the pages. You want them to get hooked into the story. And so that's that's what I start thinking about when I'm thinking about the image. I want to make sure I'm doing something that stands out. However, this does not mean it has to be flashy. It doesn't have to be like an explosion or anything like that. I think a great way that I try and think about this is you want something that's going to make your reader curious about seeing more. So the beginning of my debut novel, Blood Like Magic, is she's in a bath of blood. Um, so there's no explosions. It is a little bit more dramatic. <laughs> but, you know, I wrote that and the idea was that, you know, readers would be curious about like, why is she in this bath of blood and like what's going on with her like that's what first drew me to that snapshot of like that in my head in the first place and so I think about that when I think about openings um and again doesn't need to be super flashy for example you know you could have a contemporary in which a character is up on a stage and you're like why are they on this stage and what are they doing there is this a play are they giving a speech are they getting an award like what's going on or having a character that's very anxious about something and wondering why they're so anxious about that and what's coming next. So, you know, it's really 
going to be dependent but I think for me the main goal is like making the reader curious enough to keep turning the pages and so that's really something I would say to focus on thinking about when you are thinking about an opening that you want to grab people. Um, I do think something I also start to think about at, th at this point is I want to avoid things that I've read a hundred times before <laughs> um, because I don't want the reader to open the book and feel like oh I've, I've already read this. I've read the same thing a million and one times. Why would I read it again? However, I do think there's nothing wrong with using an opening you've seen a bunch of times if you are going to put a new twist on it or if you're going to um, present it from a new perspective. So for example, there are a lot of books that do the the characters waking up in bed um, thing. And so that's an opening that happens often, but you can do a new twist on it, like maybe they're waking up in the wilderness, or you can do a fresh perspective. So a lot of those waking up openings tend to be from people who are living in middle class homes, they have their own bedroom, they're in a safe neighborhood. Um, it's like a something that's very familiar to a lot of people and so it feels conventional but there might be a fresh perspective you know if you have for example you're writing about a character from a culture where their wake-up routine is going to be very different from for example what people might be used to seeing as a middle class um, you know all american quote-unquote opening um or even if you have your character waking up and they're not a middle class person you know even if they were like a super wealthy person person and their wake up routine involves maybe like a series of like 10 butlers or something ridiculous like that. There are ways to shift that. So even if you're doing an opening that feels conventional, you can add your own sort of twist and spin onto it. So that's what I would say if you're going to use an opening that feels like it's been done a lot to add that to it. And my final thing that I would say as a note, I have gotten used to this, so I don't think about this as much anymore, but I do think this is important when you're getting into writing because I think there can really be a temptation to do this. Don't cheat with your opening. So what I mean by cheating is like, if you are writing a slow burn contemporary novel, um, having a big fist fight in the opening scene, like a huge massive fist fight, and then the rest of your book is like nothing like that. Like there's no other fights, there's no other con there's no other dramatic conflict like that. There's nothing else. The rest of the book is so different from that initial scene. Um, or you know, having a book with like huge explosions in the beginning, and then the rest of the book is actually like deep political intrigue fantasy, and it's more about like talking and manipulating each other than any sort of like explosions or battles or like physical action scenes. And that's what I mean by don't cheat is that those things might get your reader in the door, but if that's not actually true to your book and like what the story is about, one, you can risk upsetting readers so you can get a bunch of people who start reading your book and then hate it because it's not what you presented and then you get a bunch of negative reviews off of that um, or you can have people that are just kind of disappointed or you can have people that just stop reading because they're like this actually isn't anything like the beginning of the story. Um, I think it's my personal opinion that it's best to present to people what your story is actually authentically about. Um, and I think if you're struggling with opening something that can be really helpful is to read a lot of books, read a lot of different openings, realize things that you like about them that you might want to use in your own stories, realize things that you maybe didn't like, didn't work for you, and those might be things that you learn to avoid going forward. Um, a book I also read on openings early on in like my, when I started writing, it was Hooked by Les Edgerton. It was all, the book is totally about beginnings. It's all about writing beginnings. I haven't read it recently. I meant to, but I haven't read it recently, but I did read it a while ago when I was starting doing writing and it really helped me in like solidifying openings. Um, and like after I read that book, I didn't have more troubles with openings. Like I could think really hard about what that opening scene, that om opening image would be. And now when I write forward, like pretty much my openings are what stays almost exactly the same throughout many drafts.
Next, I'd like to talk about character focus with the opening image. So we know that this is the before snapshot of your character, your hero. And so something I also like to think about is how this opening image is going to be indicative of the sort of person that my character is. So as in that bath of blood and blood like magic in that opening, um, essentially the opening line is basically saying she would like to just stay there forever. And so for me, this is a really indecisive character. This is a character who avoids making decisions very actively in her life. And she wants to stay there because she wants to not deal with the reality of her coming of age beginning and knowing that to become a witch, she's going to have to do a task that involves making a really difficult decision. And so it's not only, you know, kind of an image that I think will be gripping for readers, it's also something that really speaks to the character and who that character is. And so when I did Blood Like Magic, this was a lot of reverse engineering because I started with that image in my head and then I had to think about it more to like be like, yes, yes, this is the right opening. This is the perfect opening for this book. Um, even though that's how I started thinking about the book, I did have to still go through this process of thinking, is this the right opening for this book? And so to me, when I talk about character focus, that's what I mean is like, I want to think about how this is showing the reader in a really compact way of that opening image, who this character is and who they're going to be following um, in that brief snapshot moment. I also at this point start to think about the after snapshot. So this opening image. This is your before snapshot, according, according to uh, Jessica Brody. And the final image, so the ending of your book, that is your after snapshot. I'm say, I'm doing quotes because that's how she put it in the book. She put it in quotes, so I feel like I have to do a quote symbol. Um, but yeah, so I start thinking about that um, because I often want to pair those two together. And that's something that Jessica Brody talks about in the Save the Cat Writes a Novel book is like thinking about the pairing of that before and the after snapshot. So when I'm deciding on the after snapshot or I'm finalizing it, I also start to think about that after snapshot and what that could look like and what that could be. Um, this is a very early stage thing. I know that a lot of people don't necessarily know how their book is going to end when they start plotting it or when they start thinking about it. Some people don't like to know how their book is going to end kind of until later on in the process. So it's all like different strokes for different folks. But I like to start thinking about it in this way because it starts to give me ideas of like how that could come together at the end of the book. And so I do like to start thinking about that in this situation. You don't need to necessarily, but it is part of my process. So I figured I would talk about it. And now I want to talk about starting in the right place. Starting in the right place as a phrase was something early on in my like writing career that I would hear a lot of people talk about like within the industry like you want your book to start in the right place or you get feedback that it's like this feels like it's not starting in the right place and then you know as a person receiving feedback or thinking about it for me it was really difficult to conceptualize because I was like how do I know what's the right place and what's not the right place like how am I supposed to figure that out and so for me Part of this process is thinking about brainstorming really the different places that your book could open and the different spots that it could start and kind of thinking it through. So keeping with the example of the opening from Blood Like Magic, um, Voyage, I could have started this from her 16th birthday. So she notes in the opening that when she turned 16, she started to really be hyper aware of the fact that she was probably going to have a coming of age ceremony soon to become a witch. And she was going to have to go through that whole process and make that really hard decision. And she started to feel anxious about it from there. So I could have started from her 16th birthday and from that realization, but then I would have had all this lead up to her coming of age actually starting of her worrying. And then once her coming of age starts, which is where the book actually begins, there's more worrying about it. And so I would have just like doubled down and like had a really large opening. And so that wouldn't have worked. That would have been bad. But conversely, maybe I could have started it. And I think this is a really like, I feel like this is a really ingrained 
thing as a writer to f have this like feeling or maybe I'm wrong and maybe this was just me but you know that feeling of wanting to start super close to the inciting incident so the inciting incident that changes the whole character's world in this case being her failing her task which it says right on the says right on the back of the book so this is not a spoiler <laughs> um so leading up to her failing this task so I could have started from right there right from the failure but for one I would have started right from the inciting incident which I don't enjoy doing but then it would have started you might not have understood why she failed like you needed all of that setup and opening image and backstory of her being bad at making decisions um all of that setup also went into her whole family and what magic means to them and why it's so important and like the consequences of if they lose magic and so when she fails this task and they are at risk of losing magic forever you have already seen all of that and you understand as a reader why this moment is so important and so starting from there would have meant playing catch up um, with the reader and being like having to after the fact explain to the reader why all of this stuff is important and impactful and means something so that was kind of you know how I solidified that this was the right place to start so it starts when the coming of age has already begun but then we still have a ways to go until like the actual task bit is happening and so when I'm thinking also about like starting in the right place I'm thinking about you know my recommendation really is wanting to be close enough to the inciting incident so to the big thing that's going to happen um, that you can have some space to set things up um, but not so far away that your reader is going to get bored before you get to the big thing that's supposed to be like the big crux of the novel essentially and so it's difficult because it's not an exact science it's very much a kind of feeling out what works best for the story and there are going to be different genre conventions as well so this is also going to affect things you know if you're writing a thriller you might have something more fast-paced so you might get to the inciting incident way faster or you might have something more dramatic in your opening and then the inciting incident is something even more dramatic than that to pump it up to nine or if you have a more slow burn book you might send spend more time on that setup leading up and so you might be able to have an opening image that starts a little further back in time or maybe your book is doing something you're playing with time you're flipping perspectives and doing things like that and so you might have a different sort of opening image based on that and so essentially it's really difficult to figure out what starting in the right place means but how I work on that with myself is that I brainstorm and I think of different types of openings and I think about what is going to you know tick those boxes of it's something interesting something the reader is curious about something that can keep them reading um, it's something that says something about the character and their world in that very short snapshot um, and it's also something that's going to keep my reader riveted enough to get to the inciting incident um, it's not going to be too far back um, and it's also something that's going to you know when my character gets to the inciting incident it's going to mean something to them they're going to understand why this is such an impactful moment they're not going to miss out on things because they didn't have enough setup because I didn't start in the right place to give them enough setup so that's kind of how I would <laughs> explain that feeling of starting in the right place and how I think about that when I think about crafting my opening image and if I have the right opening image and if I'm starting in the right place and the final thing I want to talk about for this video is staying flexible. So as I said earlier, I'm now at the point where my opening image is usually the thing that stays the same through all iterations and revisions of the book, just because I've kind of really obsessively worked on it enough that like by the time I choose an opening, it's for a very specific reason and I've thought about it a lot and I've workshopped it and I've brainstormed about it and so when I pick that spot 
I know that's the right spot. However, when I was first learning all this stuff, when I first read the book Hooked, when I first read Save the Cat Writes a Novel, that was not the case. I had to workshop my openings. Sometimes I changed them. Sometimes I wrote the opening and then I would write and I would get to the inciting incident and I would realize, oh my gosh, this took too long. I don't know if that was the right way to open it. Maybe I should do it this way. Or I'd realize that I had done an opening that was cliche, but it wasn't different enough for it to feel fresh and so I didn't want to do that one anymore. So be flexible with your openings. Give yourself room to shift them and change them if you need to um, because I feel that it's really worth it. Like that opening image that you start with is what's going to initially pull people into your story and I think it's worth spending the time on. It's worth fixing if you need to fix it so that you can make sure that you have the strongest first impression possible for your book. And that was the opening image. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, I will have that playlist link um, down below for this whole series to follow. And of course, if you wanna be able to continue following this series, I recommend subscribing so that you get a notification as soon as I have a new video coming out. Um, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. It's about the opening image and Save the Cat, but I also think this is very applicable to beginnings of novels in general. <laughs> and so I hope it's helpful in that way as well. Well, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. As I said before, please subscribe to get notifications for when more videos like this come up and all of my other videos as well. And thank you so much for watching. Bye!